Hi guys, welcome to this video where I'm going to show you how to upgrade the Toshiba Portage Z930. Okay guys, so to get into this machine it's actually quite simple. You just need a small Phillips screwdriver and maybe a small flathead one as well. Um, this, this laptop hides a bit of a secret and that is under this centre non-slip grip is a hidden screw. Let's pry that out. It's just held on with adhesive and once it's out you'll see there's a security screw in the middle and this is a real pain to find a screwdriver head for uh, and what I've ended up doing on the the models that I've had this screw in before is uh, I just use a straight screw uh, driver head to just break off that pin in the center and then because it's a six head screw you can actually just get a straight screwdriver bit in there and remove it. So I've already broken the center pin off on this one and you'll find actually a lot of them are broken off anyway and then it's just a case of using the screwdriver straight edge screwdriver head to just get that screw out and you can usually do it without causing too much damage to the screw, it'll be perfectly reusable. And uh, the little cap that comes off, the little non-slip cap, you can just use a little dab of super glue uh, to stick that back on when you're finished. So with that off, we just need to take the rest of the screws around the edge off, which is simple enough, they're all just Phillips screws. And it's worth bearing in mind that the two screws on the far hinge corners are longer than the rest of the screws, so make sure you keep those two separate and they go into these two holes here. And with all the screws out, the next step before you remove the lid, if you're lucky enough to still have the SD card slot cover, just take that out, otherwise you won't be able to get the lid off. And what you should find then is the lid actually just more or less lifts off. If you lift from um, the, the corner furthest from the, the labeling, then you'll find that works best. And then just lift up towards that corner. The reason being is that the two audio connectors that are here on the motherboard, they, they sit inside this. So if you try and lift from that edge, it won't come off very well. Now with that off guys, let's talk a little bit about what's inside this laptop. Now this large black section here is the battery uh, and the first thing you're doing when you're working on any laptop is to remove that battery connection which is just over here. So you can do that just with your screwdriver just into that little nodule there and pull back and you'll find that the power connector will come out. There we go. Now we can now work on the rest of the laptop without worrying. Uh, if you do need to replace the battery because they do wear out after, over time and these laptops are now sort of eight years old-ish, uh, there's six screws, one, two, three, four, five, six. Remove those screws, you can lift the battery out and place a new one back in. When you, I'm not gonna do it on this model, but when you do, you'll find these speaker areas here, they'll come loose, but they just sit on these little plastic lugs. They're held in by these four screws, the same ones that hold the battery. So you can just slot those back into place, put your new battery in and you'll be fine. So not much else to talk about in here. We've got our backup battery over here. We've got a little daughter board here, which has our network card and a USB port. That connects via ribbon cable to our main board, which makes up the rest of the machine. You can see over here, we've got our little cooling fan and our heat sink, and that has a heat pipe over to our core i3 processor. We have our chipset here, and then we have two things that we can actually change on this machine. We have our RAM slot, and we have an M SATA slot. Now this is not to be confused with an M.2 slot. They are different things. This is M SATA. Uh, unfortunately, the drive sizes available for M SATA are much lower than they are with PCI Express or M.2 because it's an older technology. I'll put some links in the video description to show you uh, compatible devices. Uh, you can look those up. I think the largest I've seen is 240 gig, which isn't great, but for a, a thin and light like this is still perfectly usable. Now in terms of RAM, this uses uh, DDR3. You have two gigabytes baked onto the board, which is these four chips here, and then you have a slot for expandability. This has a further two gig slot, a uh, two gig card installed, uh, and it will take up to a four gig uh, giving you a total of six gig. Um, the way you remove that is the same on any sodium slot. You just see these two little metal lugs here. You pull them outwards and you'll find that the chip 
releases from its catches and then you grab it by the corners and just pull straight backwards. Now I'm going to replace this one on this model. This is another 4 gig chip that I've recovered from another machine and to put it in you just line it up with the slot so it'll only go in one way. Push it in until it's seated and then drop it down until you hear those clicks. Now the MSATA is similar, it's got two retaining screws. I'm not going to swap it out on this model but I'll show you how to do it. You remove those two screws and you'll find that the card pops up on its own and then you just grab it by the edges and just pull gently backwards. And then obviously to replace, just push it back in at a similar angle and you'll find it still bounces up. So you just hold it down with your finger on the label and then screw in the retaining screws. And that's pretty much all we can upgrade on this machine. Uh, we could go further and replace the whole motherboard if we had a failure there, but uh, for a machine this age, I wouldn't recommend that. It's probably just scrap at that point. One thing to remember when you have been working on a machine and you're ready to put it back together, do make sure that you plug that power connector in before you do, because there's nothing worse than getting the whole thing back together and realizing that you forgot to reconnect the power. Now reassembly is very simple. All we do is flip the lid over and again angle it from this corner where the audio connectors are because if you don't get those lined up with the holes then you'll find that the whole thing won't sit properly. And once you get those seated, which can be a little bit tricky, there we go, the whole thing just falls flat. There's no retention clips, it's just a straight piece of aluminium. So then the next step is to put all our screws back in. And I would recommend that you do this loosely, make sure they all bite, and then tighten them all up. And it's always a good idea to work corner to corner. So rather than starting here and going all the way around, try and randomize it a little bit. You stand a better chance of getting all the screws to bite if you alternate side to side, like so. And remembering that two longer screws are for either corner on the hinge side. And not forgetting the security screw, which goes in the middle slot. And last but not least, just put that SD card cover back in until it clicks. And there we have it. We have successfully upgraded our Toshiba 930 Portage. Thanks for watching this video, guys. I hope it's helped. Uh, as I say, there are links in the video description to the various parts that you can use to upgrade this machine. If you have any questions, drop them into the uh, comments field below and I'll get back to you. If you've liked the video, please like. And if you like this sort of content, please subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys.